I don't do nothing basic, no, my life was made for greatness I guess I can't get famous if that mean I get the payments I'm finally getting placements, but I still can't get complacent Kendrick Lamar and Baby Keem, two very popular rappers who have not only collaborated multiple times now and helped each other really build their sounds together, but who are also actually cousins. It goes beyond music with uh, me and him, so, you know, whenever I need uh, anything regarding, like, life and, and you know, if I need, if I need some wisdom... <laughs> then that's who I go to. Despite claims that Baby Keem is an industry plant simply due to his connection with one of the best rappers of all time, the truth is that Keem and Kendrick haven't always had the closest relationship. After moving to Las Vegas as a young kid to live with his grandma, Baby Keem would lose touch with Kendrick and the two didn't talk or see each other for almost 10 years. Then after finally reconnecting through a quote, unfortunate situation in their family, Baby Keem still didn't even tell Kendrick that he had also been making his own music. We connected through that unfortunate situation that had happened and um, uh, I guess yeah we just got cool like on that aspect first like you know what I mean just on a regular aspect he didn't even know I made music for a while. Then once Keem would finally send Kendrick one of his songs, Kendrick was very impressed, saying that he had a great ear for melodies and that he was going to play it for everyone in the studio. And now here in these past few years, Kendrick Lamar and Baby Keem have really worked and helped each other shape their very recognizable sound today. With the two constantly seen in the studio together, Keem having production and writing credits on multiple songs from Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, as well as multiple reference tracks that have leaked recently, which show that Kendrick has also been been helping Keem with his writing and flows. My mama mad at me, I know I fucked up big. My girl mad at me, I know I fucked up big. What's love? I guess I never understand. Every time I say sorry, I do this shit again. And then, of course, we have PG Lane, the multimedia production company and record label founded by Kendrick and his manager, Dave Free, which at first just consisted of Kendrick and his cousin, Baby Keem, and also just saw them win the award for Best Rap Performance at the 2022 Grammys with their first official collaboration, Family Ties, which the name is very fitting. But in this video, you'll see all the ups and downs of the two's relationship, hear about some of their family struggles growing up, as well as see even more of just how they've helped each other so much behind the scenes in these past few years as we take a look at the history of Kendrick Lamar and Baby Keem's relationship. Hmm. Top of the morning, 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 hold on. So like I mentioned, I think it's pretty well known now that Kendrick Lamar and Baby Keem are legit cousins, after years of rumors and speculation that they might be related, as they did keep it very quiet at first. However, as I also mentioned, the two haven't always had the closest relationship, although now they do seem to be very close, even sharing a little kiss in Kendrick's new music video. We show your bro for leverage, what a hypocrite said. But Baby Keem was born in Carson, California, where he would spend the first few years of his life before then moving to Las Vegas to live with his grandma, after his mother had really struggled with addiction, which unfortunately led to a very toxic family dynamic, something Keem has referenced in tracks like Issues. Yeah, Issues is um, it's one of my most personal records um, mm -hmm. in terms of how, um, what I went through as a child, uh, you know, with, uh, I was raised by my grandmother for the most part, and then I kind of flipped around. Um, I was with my mom for a stint. I just kind of flipped around houses a lot, so it kind of, uh, you know, people don't really know that. But living in Vegas wasn't much better either. Although his relationship with his grandma was great, Baby Keem has also said that despite him still being very young, all of the stress his grandma faced financially was also laid on him, even if it was unintentional. And along with being broke, moving to Las Vegas also meant that Keem would no longer be close to his cousin Kendrick Lamar, who at the time was living in Section 8 housing in Compton, California. I was, last time I seen him, I was probably like really young, like, probably like five or something. I was just a kid, like, you know what I mean, so. And as I'm sure you could imagine, growing up on welfare and food stamps meant that Kendrick's childhood was not very easy either. Kendrick's mother, Paula Oliver, and his father, Kenny Duckworth, would move to Cali from Chicago three years prior to having him. And with Kendrick being just one of the four kids the couple would have, his mom, Paula, would have many various jobs such as working at McDonald's and cutting hair, while his dad worked at places like KFC, as well as also being in a gang and making money in the streets to support the family. Yeah, my parents were fairly uh, young in the city of Compton, and, you know, they were 
I was basically growing up with them. But back to baby Keem, Keem had always knew that he wanted to return to LA when he was a little older, although he wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do. At first he thought that he wanted to attend college in the LA area, but after realizing that he didn't have nearly good enough grades to do so, Keem then thought about maybe pursuing an acting career instead, but just kept telling himself he would figure it out later. And baby Keem would first start making music at the age of 14. After he borrowed $300 from his grandma and bought some cheap equipment off of Craigslist. And when he first started, Keem has said that his biggest musical influences were Lil Wayne, Kanye, Eminem, Kid Cudi, and Rihanna, as well as also stating that he didn't even know that Kendrick Lamar made music. And that was until after Kendrick's fourth mixtape, Overly Dedicated in 2010, when Keem first realized that his cousin rapped too. However, despite Kendrick being one of the biggest rappers out, Baby Keem was still not in touch with him at this time. But that would all change when a quote, unfortunate situation happened in their family, which then led Kendrick and Keem to reconnect again. But again, at first, Keem didn't even tell Kendrick that he was also making music himself. That was until he finally sent him one of his songs a few years later, and Kendrick was impressed. I had started making music when I was like 14, right? And then I didn't see him. It was an unfortunate situation that happened in my family. And then I guess, uh, I guess we kind of just connected through that. But uh, like I wasn't really making music to the point where I would be like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I just, I was just kicking it, like, you know, whatever, it was whatever. He didn't really even know until, like, like later, later. I finally just, like, sent him a song, and it was just like, oh, he's like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> like he heard something, and I guess he's like, I'm going to play this for everybody in the studio. And I'm like, all right, for sure. The reason Keem was so hesitant and kept it a secret from Kendrick at first was because he said that he didn't feel like he was taking music seriously enough at this point and didn't want to disrespect Kendrick by wasting his time. And it wasn't even, I wasn't even doing it seriously enough to even be like, I would just be disrespectful at that point. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you have to, you know, it's a million other people that want that opportunity. So you have to really live up to it if you're gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to like be disrespectful by even wasting his time to even listen to something. You know, he could be listening to something else. But after finally sending Kendrick that first song, to which Kendrick actually told him to wait to release, but Keem didn't listen and put it out on SoundCloud the next day, that was the only track Keem would send his cousin for a while. As he said that he wanted to wait and just really focus on improving even more after gaining confidence from Kendrick's response. But it, it was definitely like a confidence booster for sure. Like it was like, okay, like he fucking with my melodies. Like that means like I can, I'm just gonna keep doing this then. Like. <laughs> And that's basically all Baby Keem then did with his time, getting so focused on music that he began skipping so much school, enough that his aunt would then actually call Kendrick and ask what was going on with Keem. As Kendrick said, your auntie calling me asking what's going on. This dude missing all types of days from school. Letters were getting sent to the house. I'm like, oh fuck, this dude been out here. I felt some type of responsibility. You were talented as hell, but you had to graduate. So it was all about finding that middle ground. While at this time still rapping and making beats in his bedroom, Baby Keem would actually first begin getting recognized for his production skills. Although he said that he never really wanted to be a producer and only started making beats because he didn't have any to rap over. For a minute I was like, I didn't know how it was gonna work. Like I was, am I a producer or am I, like what am I? Like I wanna be an artist, but does everybody else like know that? Like, you know what I mean? So. After releasing a few singles and short EPs actually under his birth name, Hakeem Carter, it wasn't until his Hearts and Darts EP in 2018 that he began rapping under the name Baby Keem. I don't know, I had a newfound confidence. I just felt like saying I call myself Baby Keem. Like, I always joke around, like, this is my name. I always make fake nicknames for myself and things like that, but... And this Hearts and Darts EP was also the first project that caught the attention of his cousin Kendrick Lamar, as well as former Top Dog Entertainment president Dave Free. And Dave Free, who Kendrick has credited as being the first person to really believe in his music, would basically do the same with Baby Keem. So around this time was also when Keem began working on beats for members of the Top Dog Entertainment label, going on to secure production credits on Schoolboy Q's Crash Talk album, J-Rock's Redemption, as well as 
the soundtracks for The Lion King and also Black Panther, which Kendrick executive produced. Then, after working behind the scenes for a while on the production side, Baby Keem first really started to gain some major recognition for his rapping ability thanks to his breakout hit, Orange Soda, his first song to chart on the Billboard Top 100. After blowing up all over TikTok, the now platinum track was released as a single for Keem's 2019 mixtape titled Die For My Bitch, which Drake actually called one of his top two picks for album of the year. Between him and um, uh, Baby Keem, Die For My Bitch, that, that, those, are the, those are my two picks for album of the year. Wow. So now at this time in late 2019, Baby Keem would finally move back out to Los Angeles. And as he continued to blow up more and more each day, despite many rumors floating around, it was still unknown that Keem and Kendrick were related. Then the following year in March of 2020, Kendrick Lamar and Dave Free would announce the launch of their new production company titled PG Lang, after Free had announced his departure from Top Dog the year prior. And with this new announcement also came a short four minute film Film starring Kendrick and Baby Keem, which you're currently seeing here, sparking even more rumors about the two's relationship. And Baby Keem would then become the first artist to sign with PG Lang. I have a partnership with PG Lang um, to uh, creatively. So um, we do, they handle a lot of aspects creatively and, you know, management wise and things like that for me. Um, we work as a team to uh, contribute to each other's goals and, and things like that. And with Keem being the first artist to partner with P.G. Lang, his next drop would also be the debut musical release for the company. A two-track bundle in September of 2020, consisting of the singles Hooligan and Sons and Critics Freestyle. And on the track Sons and Critics Freestyle, Baby Keem would make the first reference to possibly being related to Kendrick Lamar with these lyrics. Hold my cousin elevator in his crib, whoa, whoa. Hold my baby pictures probably on his fridge, whoa, whoa. Despite still not actually name-dropping Kendrick, many fans speculated that this bar was confirming that they are related. Or maybe Keem was instead referring to former NBA player Nick Young, aka Swaggy P, who interestingly enough is also their cousin too. But then, just a month later in October of 2020, Kendrick Lamar and Baby Keem would be featured on the cover of the 40th anniversary of the ID magazine, which also included an interview between each other discussing their music, their new company, PG Lang, as well as confirming that they are indeed related. So now with the cat out of the bag, a year later in 2021 would see the cousin's first official collaboration release, a single titled Family Ties. Along with the name itself, the cover art would also be this old family picture of the two, also paying homage to Kendrick's 2012 Good Kid Mad City album with the blacked out eyes. And this now platinum single would also be Kendrick Lamar's first release since the Black Panther album back in 2018, his first musical release under PG Lang, featured a music video directed by Dave Free, as well as I mentioned earlier would also win the award for best rap performance at the 2022 Grammys. The Grammy goes to Family Ties, Baby Keem and Kendrick Lamar. And Family Ties would then go on to be one of the two Kendrick Lamar features on Keem's debut studio album, The Melodic Blue, which dropped back in September of last year, of course again under the PG Lang label along with Columbia Records. However, Kendrick does also have vocals and writing credits on the track Vent, as well as now numerous reference recordings that have leaked for multiple songs off of The Melodic Blue, but we'll get more into that in a second. Then fast forward now to this year, 2022, which just saw Kendrick Lamar finally released his fifth studio album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, also his last album with TDE, and Baby Keem would also have his hands on this project as well, with vocals on the tracks Savior and Savior Interlude, as well as both co-writing and co-producing Die Hard and N95, which to me, N95, along with a couple other tracks on this new album, really sound a lot like tracks that Baby Keem would make, which brings us to how Kendrick Lamar and Baby Keem 
team have crafted their sound together. Now like I just mentioned, tracks like N95 and Silent Hill off of Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers sound like tracks that you would also hear on a Baby Keem album, which has led some people I've seen on the internet to say that Kendrick is biting Baby Keem, which to be honest, is I think very far from the truth. To start, I think it's pretty clear that Baby Keem has been influenced a lot musically by his cousin Kendrick Lamar, and not only influenced, but then as we also just saw, a leaker would come out and post multiple snippets of reference tracks that Kendrick had made for Baby Keem, showing that Kendrick has actually been behind the scenes helping Keem write his bars and flows. Bullies on my hit list, nothing fighting. Got, got me to protect, it's a Friday. Don't talk fake deep, I don't like it. And it wasn't just one or two snippets that got posted, but this leaker revealed that Kendrick recorded reference tracks for at least 10 released Baby Keem songs, including So What, Gang Activities, Opinions, A New Day, Stats, Rockstar P, Bullies, Busser Up, Not My Bro, Trademark, South Africa, as well as also the track 16. However, as you just heard with the 16 reference track, many of these recordings that Kendrick has done for Keem seem to be more of flow references with little to no words, meaning it's just Kendrick establishing flows on the beat and not actually writing every single lyric. And along with that, a few other leakers have also stated that both Kendrick and Baby Keem worked on many of these reference tracks together while in the studio, but it was Kendrick who just laid them down first. And interestingly enough, there were also reference tracks that leaked which showed Kendrick doing the same thing for other top dog artists as well, such as some for Schoolboy Q on Blank Face and Crash Talk, J-Rock on Redemption, as well as also J-Rock's verse on King's Dead from the Black Panther album. And it's like that, little bitch. MVP, I don't get no sleep, no, I don't like that, little bitch. Bust that open, I want that ocean, yeah, that bike back, little bitch. Do it, bike back, little bitch. Need to light jack a little bitch. Wait. So when it comes to ghostwriters in the rap game, I feel like everybody has mixed opinions on them. Someone like Kanye can have people basically write entire songs for him and nobody gets upset. Then when it's revealed that Kendrick helped Keem, they completely discredit Baby Keem. For me though, as I mentioned earlier, I see it as both Kendrick and Baby Keem building this now very identifiable sound together. Yeah, there's evidence now that Kendrick has done numerous reference tracks for Keem, but at the same time, I believe Baby Keem has also helped and influenced Kendrick as well, as it's also clear that Keem has been behind the scenes for a while now working with Kendrick, shown here in this picture he posted with Kendrick during a recording session for Damn. Now I'm not saying he's written full songs for Kendrick, but again there are multiple songs from Kendrick's new album that sound exactly like a song Keem would make, so I see it more as the two feeding off of each other, which again they are family, so. And then we have leaks such as the OG Vent version, which reveal a Kendrick Lamar verse that that might have been written for Keem or kept as Kendrick himself, but was then removed for the song's release. And then we actually heard Kendrick reuse the verse on N95. Venting in the safe. Can I fit out my truth? I got nothing to lose. I got problems and poos. I can swim with my fate. Cameras moving would never have moving. The family suing would never have make. So like this example, we don't actually know what verses were written and meant for which artist. As with the two cousins working on music together very often, they are constantly changing and coming up with new ideas. It's a thing where it's like, we, we so, like I kind of picked this up from him a little bit where we just change all the time. Mm. So, so he'll be on one record and, and then and then next day he'll be on the next record. Now, would Baby Keem have still made it if he wasn't Kendrick's cousin? Well, obviously, that's now impossible to tell, as we will never know that answer for certain. However, like we already discussed a little earlier, Baby Keem was smart and wanted to make sure that he worked and established his own skills first before even telling Kendrick that he made music. If I wasn't ready to, like, do what I'm doing now, then, then it wouldn't be happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to be, even in the process of just, like, like, I wouldn't even ask for anything, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I didn't send him my music until later, later, you know? So, I just wanted to make sure it was, you know, like, for me personally, I just want like, make sure it was, like, owned. 
Now, don't get me wrong, it's definitely helped that he's been able to form a close relationship and sign with one of the greatest rappers of all time, as connections definitely do play a very big role in the music industry, but again, it's impossible to tell where Keem would be if he wasn't related to Kendrick. Now, in terms of where the two go from here, I think we can definitely expect more collaborations from them in the future, as well as it was also announced that Baby Keem will be joining Kendrick on his upcoming Big Steppers tour this summer. But will we ever see a collab project between the two I don't know I don't know it's up to him that's really what I meant by that you know I'm down uh, it's up to him so that's all I can say We'll just have to wait and see. So that'll do it for this video on Kendrick Lamar and Baby Keem. If you haven't yet, please do me a favor and drop a like for me, and also be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for new videos every week. 